Hey everybody, I'm coach Ryan Duprat. That's Jimmy T. Martin, co-owner of Burn Slideboards. And in this episode of Duprat Power Skating, we're gonna find out how burn boards came to be, what they're doing right now, and who should be using the burn boards and why, and where they're going next, coming up in this episode. Hey everybody, Coach Ryan here, and in this episode of Dupra Power Skating, we have Jimmy T. Martin, co-owner of Burn Slideboards, and I am fired up for this interview. I've been waiting a long time for this. I geek out when it comes to hockey training, so let's just say I've had this, uh, this date circled. Jimmy, thank you so much for being on this episode. Ryan, uh, your enthusiasm is infectious, and I've been uh, I've been looking forward to having this conversation with you equally. So, so thank you for having me, and hello to all your subscribers out there uh, listening and watching this. Absolutely. Well, um, to get before we get to the background on your part, I've got to kind of go through my story how how I found Burn, and it was basically a love of slide boards for hockey players and specifically being a power skating coach. I've loved them for the lateral stride for years and getting in the muscle memory, the added power to the stride extension on the stride. I mean, I, I go on and on and on, but the problem has been finding a good quality stride board. I've, I've bought many um, roll up slide boards to rigid. I've built many unsuccessfully tried many different products and i kind of just threw in the towel and gave up and said this is this is the best i'm gonna do um people come to me you know i'd say a couple times a month saying hey coach we need a stride board what do you recommend and i'm like ah i don't know what to tell you right so um so i kind of thought that was over i ran into an ad for you guys and i just saw the movement from people on them. And I said, what is this all about? And uh, also caught my eye that it was not from an online hockey company. And obviously the rest is history, but um, I'm going to let you take it from there. Um, maybe we'll end this interview. I'll tell people what I've got going on with uh, burn boards. Very excited in. to drop that in, but tell yeah. me about how burn boards came to be and a little bit about your background, Jimmy. Yeah, no, th thanks Ryan. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is like, you don't always have to reinvent, you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? Like I came about, like I was introduced to slide boards as a division one college athlete. I was a division one wrestler at George Mason University. And what I really credit their athletic program of doing is they were really smart with training in and around your sport. So like with a wrestler, if you're not familiar, like wrestlers have to like cut a lot of weight to make a weight class and then they have to perform at their best, which is in insane. I would lose, you know, 10, 15 pounds a week to make weight and then gain it all back. That's a whole other story that I'll, I'll leave to my therapist. But, you know, point being, you got, we got good at wrestling by not just wrestling, but like really breaking down different mechanics to our training and wrestling, like a lot of sports, is very multi-directional. So it's it's you know it's something where you have to have the agility of like a football player, the athlete you know the the athleticism of like a gymnast, the cardio of like a cross country runner. So you have to like really think about like how can we add dimensionality to to our training. And so we were on slide boards. We were on like you know eight to ten foot slide boards made by you know one of our investors, uh, Barry Slotnick, who owns Ultra Slide. Okay. Uh, he had popularized the slide board in a lot of these high school, collegiate, professional, and Olympic train facilities. George Mason being one of them. And I remember just like being hinged at the hips in like almost like a wrestler stance and having to just like slide back and forth. And I was just so impressed with like how much like it gave me in such little amount of time uh, from just, uh, you know, from, from just doing what we, what we now call sprinter, sprinter slides to doing so many different types of abdominal work. I was like, man, this is an incredible head to toe, low impact core and cardio experience. That's allowing me to like, be able to, to, to be a better athlete and also to train in a way that most people don't, which is in that frontal plane, the side to side movement, which we can, we'll speak to a little bit later. So yeah. you know, 
this was around 2003 to 2007, which is where, when I competed. But okay. slide boards have been around since this the 70s. They were, you know, they were first popularized by Eric Hyden, who you know created what's called the Hyden board, you know, yeah. for, to help like speed skaters with off ice train. Then you then you know Lewis Kepler, you know, kind of like piggyback piggybacked off of that, and then you had you know it kind of making its way into mass market. With uh, with the Reebok slide and all the other inter- iterations of this like roll up at home slide board and you know going back to just the quality it seems as we were getting from the 70s into like the 90s the quality as a way to extend the reach to mass market the, it was at the expense of quality because they were thinking you know at, at the time you know like yoga mats like take it with you roll it up put it away sure. You know, though that may seem as a convenience, it came at the expense of quality. And so like after the 90s, you kind of saw like these slide boards go away when it came to mass market. They, they still like were making a dent in in the sports, you know, the sort of sports conditioning uh, space, largely because someone like Barry saw a need to like give the best product to these high caliber athletes from these high school, college, pro and Olympic uh, affiliations. So, you know, it just goes to show you, like, if you're building your own slide board, clearly there was a problem with quality. And we recognize when we, you know, when I created Burn with Johnny, which we'll get into uh, in a little bit, that, you know, lateral movement training is such an underserved, you know, type of training methodology that we wanted to impart, that we wanted to impart in our uh, inimitable fitness concept that we, that we created uh, May 1st. 2018. And that's not too, that, so that was um, just like kind of pre pandemic time right. period, right? Yeah. So, you know, it presents its own problems, I'm sure. Its own problem. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting when you talk about the pandemic, how like something so, so drastic um, and, and so terrible inspired so many things to happen for people um, positively, right? People had, it inspired people to take care of their health or it inspired people to um, realize what really matters in their life, like in terms of like where they live or what they do for a living, you know, the the, the value of family, the value of just um, showing up for yourself when, when all you have is just, is yourself, right? You know, we were in isolation for quite some time. And, you know, burn was, burn was uh, created in the same, in the same way, you know, um, uh, you know, I was, I was married before my, my, my current wife. And uh, I met this woman named Lynn Marie and she was a division one rower. And we met at George Mason university. And, you know, I was very fortunate that we we fell in love and we got married in 2010. She helped support my dream of coming to New York to be a late night comedy writer and performer and to just basically right. not use my degree whatsoever to you know, to, to venture into a very competitive career yeah. in, uh, in, in, um, you know, in, in comedy in, in and around comedy. And, you know, like around like 2013, you know, I was, you know, cause as a, as an aspiring artist, you do so many different jobs, uh, especially here in New York, I was a Starbucks barista, so I can get health insurance. I was a personal trainer, both at a gym and then privately, I worked as a copywriter for an ad agency for several ad agencies. Yeah. Um, you know, I was a nude art model for a little bit, which my parents weren't happy about, but that's another episode. That's a whole nother episode. Yeah. Yeah. The, the after dark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but sliding into that conversation briefly, you know, that was a, that was a fun moment, um, in my life, but, you know, worked as a greeting card writer. So did all these different things, wore all these different hats, but, you know, the one thing that stuck out that I, that I saw was, you know, I was training this woman in, in 2013 and she was just like singing praises about cold. Um, you know, it was a hot summer day in, in 2013 and the air conditioning wasn't working at the gym that we were training at. And so she was like, I, I have to stop. I, I feel like I'm about to pass out. And, you know, being a wrestler that trained in the heat, I can, can kind of like maneuver around that scenario. Right. Um, I made sure she was hydrated and we were just like slowing down. And she was just talking about like during the fall winter time when she was, when she was teaching at, at Harvard, uh, that, she just enjoyed that like crisp fall morning when she ran. She always felt that she was like in her, the best shape of her life, that she that she like was the, her thinnest and like her fittest. And that was interesting. And in comedy, they say, follow the unusual thing and heighten it. So I thought like, well, if all these things were happening you know, in her, in, you know, physiologically, psychologically, where she was in better shape, she was thinner because of brown fat activation and all that stuff that has now become 
very, very popular in the conversations with cold, specifically ice baths that are like all the rage now. Um, I was just thinking like, well, if all these things are true, then why isn't there a thing of like a cool temperature fitness studio? We have, we have Bikram yoga, but we have nothing on the other extreme. So I went home later that night and like, was just Googling my face off to see if there was such a thing as like a cool temperature gym and there wasn't. And so, you know, the advertised, you know, the copywriter in me thought of burn, like the pun, like burr, like you're cold and burn. Like I uh, gotcha. Home. Okay. So, so then it just became another folder on my computer, but it wasn't until my wife who I, who I married in 2010, she had gotten sick and, and was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, uh, October of 2013. And then unfortunately after, you know, several months of battling, she had, she had passed away May 12th of 2014. And so at 29, she had lost her life. And at 29, I, I hear had, that, I Jimmy. You know, it's, it's still something I work through today. You know, I mean, it's the memory of that time is embedded in the experiences that I'm, that I'm doing for Burn because for her, Burn was the, the wish that she never got to see come true. It's something that she knew would be a big part of my life because it was an amalgamation of all the things I'm very passionate about, you know, creating things from scratch, working with incredible people, you know, to help better their mental and physical health. Um, and to be able to be an entrepreneur, my mom's a small town hairdresser in Pennsylvania. So like, I kind of, you know, wanted to like live up to, to her heroics, you know, um, that I got to see firsthand Ooh. growing up. I didn't know you're going to drop that one in there. No, they didn't. Okay. Yeah. No, so, there's, there's a lot of parallels. This would not have happened without my dad. Mm -hmm. He passed away and I'm sorry. To hear that. Okay. No, I just, you surprised me with that one, Jimmy. Yeah, well, but I'm good. Okay. But, but but this is uh you know it's important for people to know the beginning of things it's uh, they all they often don't come from moments of triumph you know like you you really find out who you are by what you work through and that's why I think as an athlete it's important to show up to challenges every day to and be better because of them I think it's important as a business owner to not you know to not you know uh, you know pivot away from from adversity, you know, you know, when we opened burn after 300 pitches, you know, that both Johnny, my, my co-founder, Johnny Adamick, former public health official, um, you know, Wisconsin, uh, University of Wisconsin, Madison graduate was Bucky the Badger while he was there. That's a whole other story. He feels more comfortable with, with a, you know, with a mask over his head, but he's a very, very handsome man. Um, you know, we, we just, we created this thing together and I told him the story about why it was important for me to, to start this thing. And, you know, he, I met him months after Limery passed away and he was looking to personalize his fitness experience and his career. And he's like, let's do this. And he was the one that initiated us doing trials in a beer fridge in Brooklyn and back home in my hometown where I know the guy that runs an ice factory. And we did all these crazy things to make sure that we weren't nuts when we were telling people, Hey, fund our dreams so we can make it a reality. And after four years of pitching again, over 300 times and hearing, no, we raised a million and a half dollars and opened up the world's first and only cool temperature fitness studio in the heart of boutique fitness in New York city. And it was almost like four years to the date where, you know, Limery passed away. And it was like one of the, one of the most gratifying experiences that the dream came true and everything else that happened from the, you know, incredible success that we had at the studio largely because of the temperature, but, but more pro, but more specifically because of us having people look forward to louder movement training that we're still a business today, you know, but, um, but again, to kind of put a period at the end of the sentence, the pandemic is what forced us to close the studio. But, but, but fortunately months before we closed, we were thinking about how we could take our slide board experience and give people goosebumps in a different way with making like an at home experience for them because all of our customers were like, how can I get one for home? I've used this in the nineties. They were crappier. This one's amazing. Your programming is adds dimensionality to, to this experience where in the nineties, it was just sliding side to side, but we had incredible instructors from all walks of life help like develop this programming. We had 23,000 people come through our doors to tell us what they liked and what they didn't like. And so we had all this data and it was just a matter of, do we do something with it? So six months prior to the pandemic, we were already on track to do something at home with our slide board. So then when we were you know, mandated closed, and then eventually as a company had to choose what direction we wanted to be in, we made that lateral move as a company and went all in on being the leaders of lateral movement training and education with Burn. 
Well, congratulations. I mean, you, you definitely caught my attention. Like I told you, I was on my, my vision quest trying to find a better slide board. I thought I'd all but given up. And the amount of hockey players, because that's my world, right, yeah. that, you know, nine out of ten, I say, and by the way, how often are you sliding? You know, how often are you using your slide board at home? And nine out of ten would, number one, say, what are you talking about? What's a slide board? And then I, you know, I'm very passionate as well. And I remember the first time I talked with you and Johnny, that, that was one thing that I definitely honed in on. I was like, I could feel the heart that you guys bring to this. You know, you're not, you're not just a businessman. Like you, you put you guys have a tremendous amount of enthusiasm and heart in what you do. And I was like, these guys are for me. And that's sometimes I have to kind of curb it a little bit when I'm talking to people because I get so passionate about power skating. And I say, what, what are you talking about? You're not on a slide board for crying out loud. And then the talk obviously goes into, oh yeah, I have a slide board. It's not really fun. Uh, every time I hit this side, I wind up on the other side of the room because it moves back and forth. And, right. and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, um, things have changed for me. You know, I found burn and I guarantee you, number one, it's the fastest slide board I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> the, the quality is just, it's ridiculous. And our first demo night in here uh, last week, I had some, you know, plus 200 pounders hitting the stops on the end and they were not shifting the board. I mean, it is just, it, it, it's just fabulous. And I can't wait for more people to actually get on board and feel the difference. Like, I mean, it's hard to get people off once they start. That that makes me feel so good. And I know Johnny would be just as humbled by by you saying that. I mean, it just goes back to like, you know, how one bad apple can rot the whole tree. I mean, I get that. And it's not to to throw shade on any other brands because I know how hard it is to run a business and and I want everybody to do well so they can put the food, you know, put food or put seamless on the table for for whomever is help supporting the vision of of the, you know, of the the founders and the executive team, but I was just so disappointed that people had such bad experiences with slide boards because they did the the crappy roll up ones and they would move while they were trying to move, and it gave it instilled fear instead of like like joy and and um, you know because it's such a fun movement, you know you're like you're like a human pendulum going side to side, and it's like it's it's like enacted a flow state within me that's really hard to replicate doing something else. I mean running. Running, I can kind of get lost in that movement, but I don't know. Like there, there's a bodily awareness, like this proprioception, um, that that I that I just you can't replicate with any other move. And you know, when when you think about running and swimming and cycling and rowing, or if you're hiking or walking, like those, like all those movements involved, like with you know, like all those activities, like they're all different. Right. But the one thing that they all have in common is that they're involved with you going from point A to point B, you know, moving forward from point A to point B. And, you know, that may not sound novel or, or important, but, you know, the fact that we train our bodies nearly exclusively in the sagittal plane, you know, the forward and backwards movements is quite problematic. And so much so that you know, you are more likely to develop muscular imbalances and chronic injuries to places like your knees and your hips, your lower back, or even your ankles because of this overtraining in the sagittal plane. And you like wonder like, well, why, like, how is that like with how smart we are as, as like, you know, and maybe, maybe it's, maybe we're, maybe we're not as smart as what we think we are. Maybe, maybe we need to take a step back and like try to find ways to innovate stuff that seems ordinary. You know, I think that's your job as an innovator is to improve the systems of your predecessors. Like, and this has been a, you know, this has been a move that has been echoed since the seventies, but it, there really has been a brand that's built everything around this movement. And that's what burn is. We want to take this like winter themed movement. That's very much like thematic for, for hockey players or any, you know, any iced athlete and make this something that you do all year round. And I'm excited that we're changing that conversation. I'm even more excited that we've like found people like you who've created another channel to their business to be able to educate 
the, you know, the, the great athletes of tomorrow today in real time with this type of movement. And I'm like, so I just have to say, Ryan, I'm so happy to see like how much success that you've seen in such little time with us working with each other, because like, we, you know, we're super enthusiastic about what we're doing, but, but there's times where we're like, oh, R- Ryan's more jazzed about burn than, than we are right now. We, we, maybe we have like weekly check-ins with Ryan to like boost our morale a little bit because, you know, running a small business in 2022 is, is no, you know, no small feat, but you know, I'm just, you know, to put a period at the end of the sentence again, I'm just really excited that we're just changing the conversation about why this is important, no matter what sport you do, like most bo- sports are multi-directional. And if you want to make sure that your body is healthy from like the time that you, you know, from, from youth all the way to later in your life, you need to have a 360 approach to how you train. And there couldn't be a better solution than a, a burn slide board. Amen to that. I, and I kind of want to piggyback on some things you said and go to an expert and leader in the field because I was going to make a separate video on and I I tell a lot of my parents because they have sons or daughters in a general speed conditioning kind of program right and they can't figure out they're like Ryan they're getting a little bit quicker but they aren't getting a ton faster. And I always bring them back to an article I read about Connor McDavid, right? I'm like, you take his, his um, off ice, you know, vertical speed, you know, on, on the, would that be, what plane would that be? The sagittal, sagittal? Uh, so, yeah. So uh, if you're moving forward, it's the sagittal plane. Yeah. yeah. He's not blazing by any means, but then when he gets on the ice, right, with his lateral push, He's one of the fastest, if not the fastest in the NHL right now. Mm-hmm. Could, you, could you speak to that real quick? Yeah, because, you know, there are so many like, I'm sorry, I'm just silencing my phone right here. You know, like there are so many different stabilizer, stabilizing muscle groups, like in your, you know, what's called like your lateral subsystem um, that help with, you know, help support those, you know, those forward movements. And if you're not training, if you're not training laterally, those, those muscles aren't getting, you know, any love, so to speak. Um, it makes sense that, you know, I would, I would assume that Connor's off ice training program had a lot of like lateral movement training in it, maybe slide boards. I would hope so. Um, but maybe he was also just, he, he's taking a 360 approach to his training. And it's interesting, like, you know, I know a lot of runners and, you know, whether they're sprinters or they're like long distance runners, a lot of them, you know, majority of them think that they get better at running by just running more. And it's like, no, like what's your strength program? Um, How are you, how are you working on all three planes of motion in order to get better at that, the main one, which is moving forward. Um, So I'm not surprised that Connor had, you know, he may not be the fastest runner, right? Mm -hmm. Because what he what he's using to move forward um as a runner is is different than what he needs to to push to be a fat a better skater on the ice so i think that like you know the probably the differentiating point of you know why he is good on the ice is because like i said he's he's taking into consideration or at least his his training team is taking into consideration that he needs to activate muscles around his hips and his glutes and his quads and his calves and, you know, figuring out like how he can be better at that movement and running not is not necessarily the best indicator of moving forward on the ice. So, right. so I think, you know, long winded answer is because he's adopting a multi planner approach to his training. Okay. I, I, and I'm, thank you for kind of explaining that more in depth because I, I know how to to explain about my training and the mechanics that I use, but to actually put that to words and I tell parents, I'm like, it's two different movements. And they're like, can you be more specific? And I'm like, I can't find the words for it. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, no worries. I mean, if you think about it, if we can just visualize a hockey player moving forward to either like to go after a puck to score. The forward movement is a byproduct of the lateral movement. Mm-hmm. Like when you're running, your your feet are moving forward, therefore your body's moving forward. Right. So it make it doesn't make sense to me 
for hockey players not to train laterally, specifically on a slide board, because like to not to not embrace lateral movement training on a slide board is to not train for your sport. It's like a runner not running to compete in a running race. Right. Like everything on the ice, or I would say all the forward movement on the ice is because of all of the muscles that have to be activated in that frontal plane, that side to side movement that allows them to skate better. So now like knowing this through you, it, the differentiating point of a good hockey player becoming a great hockey player is how well they skate, right? Like it's 100%. right. Oh like, yeah. Cool. You can be the, you can have gone to a, a place and had great stick handling drills and all that stuff. And you may look really cool doing it, but if your skating's garbage, good luck. Right. That's at least what I've been told. Right? Preach it, Jimmy. That's what I listen that's what to I'm Jimmy saying. people. That's it. Give me, I'll, I'll, I'll be a guest, guest coach at the stride. Oh, man. You know what I mean? So like, why would, again, I'm going to emphasize this again. You hockey players, not training laterally on a slide board is like to, to knowing that lateral movement is how they move forward on the ice is like a runner not training on a treadmill or running running forward in order to to compete in their race it just right. doesn't make sense get on a slide board that's how you can that's how you can mimic on the, it's just like a very thematic way of training like you're sliding side to side and by the way a shorter slide board and then when i say short i mean i mean in comparison to a longer one mm -hmm. It's not that the shorter ones are better than the longer ones. It's, it's, it's all about what you want out of the experience because our boards adjust from five to six feet. One, we want to make sure that we can, we can um, use that bumper adjustment to five feet to serve all athletes of all ages. So youth athletes, as well as, you know, maybe some people that this is a new movement and the bumper acts as a training wheel, if you will, right. to, to kind of get used to that, the surface. Perhaps a short-legged Frenchman. Well, just saying. Exactly. Um, I I was ha I was waiting for you to say that, not me, as as a, not not a Frenchman, <laughs> but uh, but love the French, uh, especially their kisses. Anyway, um, so, but uh, uh, you know, like the longer the board, you know, typically if you're an incredibly tall athlete, like you're six 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 seven six eight. An A4 board would be, would be most appropriate, just knowing how long your legs are. Right. Uh, most people aren't that tall. Um, but if you're someone that's shorter and you're on a longer board, you know, the idea of stabilizing your body, like holding that slide position for a few more seconds before you hit the other side is also incredibly important. But when it comes to like at home work and trying to add a bunch of different you know trying to invest in having boards like you have now at your studio to serve as many people as possible like a six foot board is is pretty appropriate and you know our investor apollo ono who is the most oh. decorated u.s you know winter yeah. athlete of all time for him to be like yeah six foot is a good length because it's like it mimics speed and going back to the to the, you know, being a, fa a better skater and a faster skater, you can kind of mimic that like sprint, that sort of like, you know, yeah. um, uh, those sort of um, ice ships, you know, like the like get on the ice and get, and get right to where you need to go right. um, a lot quicker. I'm learning the terminology. So I apologize to anybody who's listening is like, what is he talking about? You know, off ice shifts, like learning how to like, just get on the ice and go a lot quicker than I mean, think about it. I mean, I watched like watch now I'm watching hockey pretty, pretty regularly. And oh my gosh, like as soon as they go from bench to ice, like they are, I mean, they're at it. And yeah. I can't think of a better, you know, sort of uh, parallel than being on a slide board and getting at it too. You know? Yeah. We actually, uh, the other night we, we took uh, Tabata. You're familiar with Tabata. Oh, very familiar. Yeah. Very yeah. We married that in here and there were some people, I think they were calling me names under their breath. <laughs> oh, you're gonna have a lot of uh vulgar names by the by the time you're yeah. <laughs> they they were thankful two, three days after, but not, not at that time they weren't. But um I wanna I wanna shift into uh in a second, I wanna shift into the future and where you guys are heading next and, mm -hmm. and big things on the horizon. But specifically, I know why I tell parents and and players, hey, get on a slide board and don't just 
slide, be pur purposeful, work on your mechanics. Hockey, you know, ice rinks around here, we're up to about, you know, cheap ice is four and a quarter, if not up to 500 bucks an hour. An hour. Go build the muscle memory and mechanics off ice. And there's still a lot of parents that can't make that paradigm shift in their head. They're like, Ryan, I don't understand. How are you, how are you going to help my son or daughter off ice when they're playing on ice? And I try to equate it to, I'm like, it's like telling a football team that the team's not built in the gym in the summers and hitting the weight room and just going out and doing drills on the field. You know, can you tell me, I know you've had um, several players or a lot of players now in the hockey world getting on burn boards. What are you seeing with gains that they're making just from being on the burn board? Their, their body is already primed to move that way. As I said, like forward movement for hockey players is a byproduct of lateral movement. So like the body already knows the mechanics. It doesn't have to like, you know, it's not rusty. Like it's it, like you're oil, you're constantly oiling the machine so that when it's time to go, it's ready to go. So the lot, a lot of the feedback has been like, wow, like by being able to bring the ice home with burn, yeah. it's you're having year round training to be able to just like touch up, you know, it's not like, think about it. Like if, if ice costs as much as it does, which is crazy. Again, I was a, you know, I, I, I came from a poor sports, like wrestling, you just need sneakers, a mat and like lighting and like, and like decent clothes. I mean, we wore spandex. I still wear spandex to this day. My wife hates it. Um, that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other podcast. Um, but you know, I would never not train. Like, I mean, I trained wrestling year round. I mean, cause one, it was accessible. I can't imagine like not being able to be, to be able to be on the ice because of like some sort of financial limitation. You're like, okay, what do I do? And then, you know, you're not doing anything. And then all of a sudden you're, you're asking your body to show up to this experience when it hasn't done in a while and, or is doing it infrequently. It like, it's not, that's not good. It's just like, you know, they, they tell us like when we get over 40, I'm, I'm 37. So I'm like, you know, I'm getting, I'm closer to 40 than, than I'd like to admit. But like me just going from zero to 60 to do like a 40 yard dash, but I'm, I'm probably going to tear hamstring. I'm, you know, my body's not used to doing that movement. Yeah. So I shouldn't do that movement unless I'm training my body to, to like compete in that type of way. So I would say with, with parents, like you have a blessing in disguise with one, being able to go to a studio like yours to get this type of training so that you can then apply that to what they're, what the most important thing that matters is like what they do on the ice but if, if, you know, if the Stry Lab is not near you, or if you are a hockey parent that's, you know, that's used to paying, you know, that much for ice time, you're making less than that, you know, uh, you know, uh, um, less the payment getting a board and, and not just getting a board, but being able to enjoy hundreds of workouts that we've created with 20 plus instructors that are, that were competitive athletes or revered, you know, fitness instructors here in New York City that put you through a five to 60 minute workout. We actually have like off ice specific workouts. We got to figure out how to fly you up to New York, Ryan. We got, we're going to, I'm ready you know, to go. I know you, I know, you I'm know, I'm ready. You got to ask your wife though. I mean, she, she, she's the one that, that she's ready to go. She wants to get, right? she wants to be a certified. We got to touch on that. To the the part part. But you know, go, going back to your, your original question, like we wanted to meet people where they were at uh, financially, physically. And as a, you know, again, as a former division one athlete who wouldn't have gotten to where I got, you know, without the support from all the coaches that, that I had growing up who invested their time into me, including my father, um, you know, I, I understand how important it is to be able to start as early as you can to build good habits now so that, that you have that muscle memory and so that you have that assurance that like you are layering in progress after progress with your, with your mechanics, because what separated a good wrestler from a great wrestler was the amount of time that they rehearsed being on the mat. Okay. If, if, if accessibility is an issue with ice, you need to be on a board because it, again, it's, it's the best thing that mimics that movement um, so that you don't like tweak your back or your hips when you, when, when it matters most like competing yeah. on ice. So um, I hope that answered your question. I just, Oh, I, and then I, some, I, yeah. Well, there's, and there's, there's players, Jimmy, they'll go home for two hours and shoot pucks. And I'm like, and how much are you working on your skating? And there's, uh, I'm like, maybe take a little from that two hours 
Right. You know, because you're, you're skate. How often are you ripping off shots in a game? Not that often. Not that often. You're but you know what you are doing? You're skate. You're skating. Oh, <laughs> you're skating most like almost all the time. So, you know, like going back to like different facets of training, like I understand just like with wrestling, like we would do like, you know, neutral drills, like, you know, shooting, like takedowns. We would have like bottom work where we would like worry about how do we escape if someone was on top of us? We would have like top drills where it's like, how do you hold somebody down? They're all different aspects of the sport. So like with hockey, right? Like you have, you have the stick handling, you have, you have the, the skating, like the, the slide board is is the skating part. And you can also do stick handling work on the board too. So it's a a win-win. It's like you're hitting both both things. So I know everybody wants to be the next, you know, you know, Connor, you know, Connor, you know, they want to be the next Ovechkin or they they want to go back in time, like the next Gretzky, but like, come on, like you have to be able to skate better. That's the foundation of the sport is putting on, putting on your skates and being able to get to that puck before somebody else. And I don't know how you can do it without sliding. You know, so I can't, I mean, and you're a division one former athlete. I can't tell you the the kids that come back from a showcase and I say, how would it go? They said my hands, you know, this, this, and this are division one. My skating was D3. Mm-hmm. Work on your skating, work on your skating, work on your skating. I know I'm hitting a dead horse there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, beating a dead horse. Uh, my wife keeps trying to steal my board. <laughs> She is a very, she's a third grade teacher. She is a very attractive little thing. She always complains about her hips and her back patio and everything else. And I'm like, you're perfect. Don't worry about it. Anyway, with that being said, talk to me about, because I'm going to make some classes here for adults. They don't have to be beer league players. Just like you're saying, how can this just benefit somebody that's into their fitness for a totally different type of workout? Well, look, I'm happy to hear that your wife's hip pain has gone away now that she obsessively uses the burn board. Um, you know, again, it goes back to what most people don't do and they don't move laterally. They don't, they don't train in exercises in the frontal plane. And why would they? Because the fitness industry has had a dogmatic approach to how we train. And most of those movements, most of the popular equipment that's available for people to sweat and to feel good is in the sagittal plane, you know, your ellipticals, your rowers, your bikes, all those things, even like the activities like walking and running and and all those things I mentioned before, it's all in one plane of motion motion because the human experience is very forward and backwards, right? So I I don't blame people for just like not getting it, but it's our job as a business to just like let them know like, hey, we just the same way that like smoking smoking on planes just like was was a thing at one time or like smoking in doctor's offices like that was like normal we're kind of like ashing out the 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 you know the myth that you need to you know that moving forward and backwards is the way that you that you feel and you know feel and perform your best like progress isn't linear and the and neither should be your your workout routine so like adopting regular lateral movement training into your week whether it's once a week or it's every single day in a different way is going to pay dividends to how you feel and how you move. I mean, look, my, my mom's 64 and so is my father. And, you know, my dad's a former bodybuilder, strong man, like, you know, so imagine insert all the things that are currently like hurting him Mm -hmm. right now from just like heavy weight and, and doing all these things. My mom, who was a big step aerobics person, she's on her feet all day as a, as a hairdresser. And so she's had like back pain. She had broke her, um, her calcaneus, like in her foot, um, in an accident and she's slowly recovering, but like, you know, as they're getting older, like they don't want to fall. They don't want to be a fall risk. And you know how you don't become a fall risk by training laterally because are they, are they training laterally? Oh my God. My, so one of our commercials is my entire family. Like I, really? I have guilted them into letting me create a commercial around them. My sister who has two kids and is a busy mom, former D one field hockey player who just like, doesn't have any time being a, being a mom, you know, because of her busy work schedule and also yeah. being a mom, 10 minutes on the slide board, she's sweating. She's cooked. Yep. Um, my, my brother-in-law, former semi-pro hockey player, like wanted a Peloton type experience, but with the slide board, cause he's a hockey player. Guess what? Yeah. Guess what? Hey, hey, brother-in-law, you got the perfect solution for you. My mom, who's just looking to be able to, you know, have a low impact, 
cardio experience that she can watch TV and, and, and slide side to side. It's a slide board. And we even created senior workouts on our, on our, you know, on our platform because of people like my mom who like, wanted to have some modifications that like wanted to be able to, to do this, but maybe to not to the degree of like, you know, what we normally do with our, you know, 20 and 30 and 40 somethings that are like right. grooving. So, you know, going back to like you being able to have the everyday person walk on board. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a learning curve. It's not supposed to be easy at first. Right. But like the best things never are. So knowing that by showing up for yourself, by moving in a different way, how like it's you're investing in your health over the long term it's and also feeling like exhausted from a from a movement that's really taxing but a movement that makes you feel just like a, a full body experience and is joyful and makes you feel like you either ice skating or rollerblading yeah. and you can just kind of shut your mind off and be completely in the moment I could not, I can't not, I can't wait for people to be able to experience that through, through you and your wife, because it is, I remember seeing the thousands and thousands of faces of people that were like a bit cautious and then they came out like obsessed. And I know that that will be the case with what you do where you're at. That's awesome. I love that. Um, Give us, give us one little pearl, just give us one little gem of something that's on the horizon for you guys that, that maybe you haven't even shared with me yet. Yeah. So, so the good thing about having a co-founder is that we can, we are each other, we are each other's biggest, like we champion each other's uh, ideas, but we're also like incredibly critical of each other's ideas. It's, it's sort of like a, you know, idea meritocracy, the best idea wins, it doesn't matter who it's from. And also, you know, it's also our responsibility as, as founders to constantly check where we're at, you do a temp check as a brand to think about what's ahead, right? Super important to be invested in the now and how we how we can continue to make the impact that we're currently making. But but just as we were thinking ahead while we had the studio about the slide board, we had to do the same, we're doing the same exact thing right now with our, you know, with our our brand. So the problems that I saw that we had both seen was education. And how can we echo our philosophy to coaches all throughout the world? train health and fitness professionals that may not know about slide boards or lateral movement training. How can they know about it and to be able to share the knowledge that we've been able to distill through our experiences to be able to have them do that under their roofs, whether it's at home in their strength and training facility or as a, as a, you know, as an instructor of somebody else's um, brand. And so about a month ago, we're very excited that we had gotten accreditation from the, from NASM and from AFA and soon from ACE uh, to have created the first, you know, the industry's first slide board certification program, which is available on our site. Um, you and your wife are, are, you know, I'm proudly board certified. You're, you are a board certified coach. And I was going to say, what's got two thumbs and working through a certification, right? right? This guy. So, so that was the first touch point. We're like, we want people to have insight to a solid training that's incredibly important, no matter if they're training youth athletes or youth individuals to the active aging population. It's all about, it's all about, you know, um, educating, you know, we're educators of this movement and it's, it's our responsibility to, to do the homework because the people that had started this movement came from a place of, of um, academic authority. So we wanted to do the same thing. So, so that is something that was super important for us is to like to educate. It was also important for us to think beyond just at home because, you know, we, we started this business at a time where everybody was working out at home. The world has, has evolved um, for the better, I would argue, where there's a lot more options for people to exercise. They can choose to have options at home and they can also choose to build community and to um, hold themselves accountable by going places. We wanted to meet them no matter what roof they were under. So, so we've made a concerted effort to be able to, you know, work with some some brands that and, and some smaller businesses and bigger businesses that have brought our slide board under their roof. And we started with the mom and pop shops that were most affected by the pandemic. And we're looking for new programming to, to excite people to come back. And now we're working our way to some bigger brands that that I can't mention the names, but some bigger ones that that 
many of you will know if we said it, to be able to allow them to see our slide board as often as they see a treadmill at a studio. That's so that's really, really exciting. And then the last thing is thinking about the fitness of not just today, but the fitness of tomorrow. How can we venture into the metaverse? How can we venture into uh, a world that we don't know? That's a world that's actively being created in real time. And so we are working with the team to think about those things and mm -hmm. how to execute upon those things so that, um, you know, so that this type of movement that we are, that we are leading, that we are authorities of, how can that be applied in a space that, that most of us um, can't even imagine is going to, to be again, the metaverse is such a, such a, a wild, wild west right now. And there's a lot of, you know, critiques about it, but, we are always looking ahead, even though we're moving side to side. So those are sort of the, the big, the well, big that, that we're thinking. <laughs> that was good. Coin that phrase right there. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you just, I started going, you know, I'm a big movie guy. I started going ready player one. Like, what, oh, what's he totally. talking about? <laughs> yeah, we could talk offline. I could show you some, some things. I mean, it's uh it's really exciting. And I think like, you know, we, we want to walk before we can run. I just think it's important to signal that we're having this conversation, you know, or that we are trying to entertain options in that arena um, because, you know, we know that we're making a difference where we are right now. And, but the landscape of that world is again, like I said before, being created in real time. So we're just trying to understand if there is a opportunity there and we're slowly seeing that there is. So uh, ex excited to explore it. That's huge. Well, I want to give you some some last thoughts if you have anything else to leave us with. But I want to leave you with the fact that I'm very, very proud and humble to be powered by Burn here at the new Stride Lab. I mean, it's it, people are getting just a tiny little taste and they're already asking to come back for more. And this is just demo days. We haven't even really had a, a grand opening yet. So yeah. I, I am just I'm fired up for the future here. I can't wait to get as many hockey players on burn board as possible. Non-hockey players on burn board as possible. I, I'm very grateful to you and, and Johnny. And as a matter of fact, I hope people will check the links down below because you can pay full price if you want and, and they're going to let you, but they also have given uh, viewers a do Pro power skating, a very generous discount code that will be down in the links below. Please check it out after uh, you watch this video. But um, if you give us any last thoughts, Jimmy, before we uh, head out. Well, yeah, first off, uh, if you want the, the best discount, you can get, get, through, uh, get through through Ryan here because uh, Ryan uh, has a better discount on, on this end than what we currently do on our site. So if you wanna save more, get it through Ryan. Um, you know, what I would say is that I know if you're a parent listening, I know it's, it, I can't, I mean, I'm going to be a father in March of, of 2023. So I'll, I'll get a taste of my own mess. And um, uh, then, and I'm very excited too. Congratulations um, on that. You. No, really excited. The first boy, the family, and uh, he will be spoiled, but, but we will, you know, I'm trying to see if I can make a mini board for him so that we can uh, get him on board as soon as possible. He'll be, <laughs> sliding, he'll be sliding by one and a half. Oh my gosh. Hashtag baby on board. Um, awesome. But, uh, but I, as a parent, who is trying to find the best solutions for their for their kid to to you know really enjoy what they do with their sport? The one thing that I want them to keep in mind is is the fun factor. You know, wrestling wasn't always fun for me, but what, what, what you know what was fun was everything built around the sport. The you know the the random games that we would play that were you know physical in nature, but didn't really have to do with wrestling. You know, wrestling each other and the overarching thing that we get from, from people that use burn boards is like, it's fun. And as you were saying, Ryan, like it's hard to get people off them once they're on them, specifically kids. Yeah. And I mean, I can't emphasize enough. I know it may sound biased saying this, but like I genuinely, it generally melts my heart when I see just like smiles coming on the, you know, on the faces of like, uh, of, of kids who, who like had never been on a board before. And they're just like, so in it, like in a world where we're constantly distracted with technology, where our, our focus is everywhere. There's something about how the board like begs of you or actually requires you to be so in the moment 
And we don't get to have that often where we're like moving our bodies and shutting our minds off and sliding because of all the things that your body has to do to stabilize itself in that position. You can't overthink. You can't be thinking about like, you know, what's, what's going on with homework or what's going on at home. Like you are completely in the moment. So if you're really trying to invest in something that's fun, that is challenging, that is incredibly thematic to hockey, but also something that you can get lost in and share with your family. I mean, this is a multi-generational tool. It's, it is truly something that we wanted to make for every member of the family. And that's why we have our subscription. That's why we have incredible coaches like Ryan to be able to impart our wisdom in his incredible way. Um, it, it is something that we want to be known as much as a treadmill is to people when it comes to exercise and slowly but surely that's happening. And we wouldn't be here without, but without our incredible team and with our incredible you know, community who continue to sing our praises and to share their incredible results and, 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 um, you know, insights as to like why this is an experience that more people need to know about. So, so yeah, short story long, there should be fun in movement and you'll get that if you get on board with burn. Uh, the do pros are on board because Christmas is coming up and it's number one on the missus. She doesn't want to come to the studio. She wants one at the house. At the house. Right? So I'm going to use that coupon code. That's Appreciate right. that very much. <laughs> you got that. Yeah. But Hey, this is, um, definitely to be continued. I would love to talk to you again sometime. I know all the viewers appreciate it. Hopefully you learned a ton about burn today. So I thank you very much, Jimmy. Maybe next time you could even pull Johnny on. Oh my god, That'd that be will, brutal. But That will be, if people want a, uh, our, our attempt at a Netflix comedy special. Uh, yeah. We'll have the both of us at the same time. Um, Johnny. Yeah. Johnny is just, he's an incredibly passionate and, excitable guy that um you know also is a father of, of a three-year-old his son arlo and his wife kelly they live in minneapolis we do this thing together but from two different places i, I live outside of new york city okay. and i gotta tell you like uh, i wouldn't be here without him i wouldn't have met you through without johnny and i'm so happy that we're all together trying to you know preach the good word about about lateral movement training and um, you know, if anybody has any questions, they could find me on Inst- Instagram at Jimmy T Martin. Um, our, our handle for our business is at burn B triple R N and our website's the burn.com. We also have videos on YouTube, just to kind of explaining, you know, from the, from the, the mouths of someone like Apollo Ono to other customers and other, other community members that, that really enjoy what they're doing. If you want to see what we're all about, just type in B triple R N in the good old Google and you'll find us out. Well, and if it's okay, when we get off this call, I'd like to get those links and add those to the video description oh, below as well. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. Good deal. Well, once again, very appreciated. I'm forever in your debt. I don't know what that entails, but to just treat that well. <laughs> uh, well, no, we, we wouldn't be here with people like yourself, Ryan. And I'm so happy to see, uh, I mean, truly how much of an impact you're making in such a little amount of time. I mean, I got to tell you, it is, it is not easy starting something and, and the investment that you've made into the people that you're leading it. I mean, it shows um, you are, you are an incredible guiding light to uh, to a community that, that needs more people like you. And we couldn't be more proud to quite literally stand alongside you uh, in this journey. So, so thank you for, for you, for you being you. Hey, likewise, you know, in the words of uh, Wyatt Earp and Tombstone, I ain't got the words. <laughs> I ain't got the words. I'm just happy I found you guys. And thank you for joining us today. Everybody, that's Jimmy T. Martin, co-owner of Burn Boards. And check all the links down below to find any more information. And that's it for this episode of Depra Power Skating. And just like I always say, like number 99, I hope you have a great one. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks.